everyone and welcome back to Soul Stain Inc. My name is Beth and I am here today with an attempt at a weekly reading review wrap up type of deal. So I've done these a couple of times before where I just told you what I'd read during the week and gave you a quick update during readathons, but I'm going to try to do these more regularly. Um, if you like the way I'm doing them, let me know. If you don't like it, let me know. But please give me some like construction, constructive criticisms, instructions on what you would like to see if you don't like it done this way. So today is Monday, June the 11th. And over the weekend, I completed Upside Down Magic book number two, Sticks and Stones. Now, this book series is by... Sarah Milnowski, Lauren Miracle, and Emily Jenkins, and it follows our main protagonist, Nori, and her friends in the Upside Down Magic class at her middle school. In her world, once you finish normal school, which is um, elementary, then you move on to a middle school where you have um, come into your magical powers, and so you have normal math classes and reading classes, but you also have them focusing on whatever your particular magical skill is. And there are three or four of these skills. There's flyers, flickers, fuzzies, and furries, maybe. Um, anyway, there's, you know, flames and flying and turning into animals and being friends with animals and kind of working with animals. Um, but the Upside Down class is full of kids whose magic just doesn't perform like everyone else's. And in book two, we're dealing with bullies and the kids kind of coming more to terms with their upside down magic and trying to figure out how to work with it and make it into a viable resource for them or get it under control or whatever it is they need to do. This book was absolutely delightful. I gave it about a, I think a 3.5 to four stars. I think I rated it four stars on Goodreads. I may have only rated it three. I don't know, but it's a solid 3.5. Um, the thing that I love about the Upside Down Magic series, or the two I've read anyway, is that it's fun and it talks about friendship, but you also get lessons on asking for help and how to deal with bullies and how to accept yourself and how to be a good friend and a good family member and all of those things that middle school students really, really need, but don't really, really want to listen to the adults when we tell them about those things. And books like this kind of make you think while you're reading it, and it really could connect to the reader, and I think that's awesome. So I definitely suggest that if you have a reader interested in magical reads, or if you are a reader interested in magical reads, that you check this series out. The other book I finished over the weekend was The Midnight Palace by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. Now, this is the second book that he had published. It is the second of the three in his upper middle grade slash young adult Niabla trilogy. Um, although they're, they don't follow similar characters at all, but there were three in that series that he came out with. And they are translated by Louisa Graves, published by Little Brown and Company. Um, I loved this book, but I love Carlos Shree Zephod, so I'm sure you're not surprised by that. Again, this was the second book he ever had published, and it's written for a younger audience. So the smooth flow of his writing style just isn't quite there yet. However, it is still very atmospheric. It still pulls the reader along, and it is still a fabulous, spooky read. Now, this book follows Ben and his friends. And at the beginning of the book, you find out that Ben is a twin and his parents died right after he was born. And so he and his twin sister, Sheer, were separated, lived their entire lives without knowing about their sibling. And then when he's 16, his grandmother and sister show up at the orphanage that he has been living in his entire life. He meets his sister, winds up finding out that they are, in fact, twins and that they have a curse that was placed upon them by this evil man that murdered their mother and father. And then it goes on from there over the course of the next couple of days of their lives. 
right before their group is separating out to go um, on to their futures, Ben Shear and Ben's friends in the Chabar Society that was created with um, all of these uh, members of the orphanage that are the same age that grew up together. They have to find all of these hints and clues and try to figure out what is happening to save all of their lives. It takes place in Calcutta in the 1930s. Yes, in the 1930s and then through the 40s, I believe. Um, and it's just very well done. The narrator is the older version of one of the boys in the narrative, although not Ben. So it's very interesting to see how uh, the narrative is going along. And then you get like a little note where he's writing the manuscript out. Um, it was very well done. I very much enjoyed it. I gave this a four out of five stars and I am looking forward to reading the final of his young adult books which is entitled The Watcher in the Shadows. So definitely, if you haven't read anything by Carlos Ruiz Zephon, um, or if you're someone who enjoys YA more than you enjoy adult uh, thrillers, this is something you should check out. I'm going to go read some more. I'll let you know when I finished another one. Hey, guys. It is the middle of the day on Wednesday the 13th, and I just finished listening to the audio for The Trials of Apollo, book one, The Hidden Oracle. Um, I unwrapped this probably in week two of middle grade May, but I had already put a hold on the audio. So I thought, oh, I'll just wait. That should come in soon. And then it didn't come in until this past week, but I did enjoy this. Not quite as much as I enjoyed the Magnus Chase books. However, I don't like Apollo as much as I like the Magnus Chase characters. So there's that. The awesome thing about this though, is that Apollo who has been cast down from Olympus and turned into a full-on mortal by the name of Lester Papadopoulos, pimples and all, um, meets up with a demigod and together they find Percy and Percy takes them to Camp Half-Blood. So you get to catch up with characters from Camp Half-Blood and I loved getting to see my babies and hearing what they're up to, although many of the main characters from earlier books were not present for this one we did get to hear what they're doing and they're like going to college and you know trying to get all that taken care of which I thought was awesome but yeah I only gave this a three and a half out of five stars I am looking forward to seeing what happens in book two though and I can't wait to see some more of Peaches. Right. It is Thursday evening and I've just finished The Secret Zoo by Brian Chick. This book follows Noah and his friends Richie and Ella as they go into a secret zoo that is a magical place and where they are searching for his little sister who is the fourth in their group of action scouts and who disappeared almost a month ago. Uh, she was apparently studying the odd behavior of animals and now that odd behavior of the animals is going to help her friends find her. Um, I love the premise of this book. I love the plot, but the action scenes ended very quickly and were kind of bland for the most part. The story moved along at a really weirdly varying pace and the writing style was very redundantly descriptive to the point where I was skimming pages at a time because he would just go on and on with useless descriptions in my mind. I think that I am in the minority here because I would give this, I gave it a soft three on Goodreads. It's more like a two and a half. I really like the idea behind it, but the writing style could not get behind at all. Whereas the full on actual average rating on Goodreads is a four. So I think I'm in the minority here, but uh, I will say that the plot line I really enjoyed. It was just the writing style I couldn't go with. So I did finish it, and I'm not going to continue on with that series. And this is where I leave you. I'm going to just wrap it up right here. Say if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. Come talk to me in the comments. Let me know if you've read any of these, if you plan on reading any of these. 
what your thoughts were, if you agree or disagree with me, and if you like this format for me uh, discussing the books that I've recently read and all that jazz. I will talk to you again soon. Until next time, I hope you guys read a good book and have a great day. Bye.